Good evening and welcome to the fastest half hour in the cryptid world, This Week in Bigfoot. The new show that scours the internet and the Bigfoot community each and every week so you don't have to. Then we take it and wrap it up in a nice neat 30 minute package. If it has to do with Sasquatch, Bigfoot and the Wild Man, we've got it all covered. And boy, I tell you, things are starting to get a little weird out there, that's for sure. Bigfoot and UFOs. Could last week's UFO alien claim finally put an end to the long-running Bigfoot origin debate? Some say yeah. Mike Lucci combs through the top five Bigfoot databases and fills us in on what he's found. Snowwalker demands to know where the body is in the latest two minutes with, and Idaho gets its first Bigfoot sighting of the year 2023. These stories and more, so you better buckle up because we got lots to talk about and the clock's already ticking. Let's go. Our lead story this week, we are not alone. The idea that sightings of Bigfoot and UFOs may be related is not a new one. In fact, there have been numerous reports over the years of people witnessing both phenomena in close proximity to each other. While some have dismissed these reports as mere coincidence, others have suggested that there may be a deeper connection between the two. Last week, Air Force veteran, former Arrow team member, and National Geospatial Intelligence Agency vet David Grush announced that he's blowing the whistle on secrets he says no one has ever shared publicly before. You are one of the most trusted former intelligence officials in the US defense and intelligence establishment. Yes, I was. You were trusted with the most intimate secrets. Yes. What conclusion did you come to at the end of your time on the UAP task force? Uh, the UAP task force was refused access to um, a broad crash retrieval program. When you say crash retrieval, what do you mean? Uh, these are retrieving non-human origin uh, technical vehicles, you know, call it spacecraft if you will, non-human, exotic origin vehicles that have either landed or crashed. We have spacecraft from another species. We do, yeah. How many? Quite a number. You're kidding. No. Do we have bodies? Do we have species of... What? Well, naturally, um, when you recover something that's either landed or crashed, um, sometimes you encounter um, dead pilots. And uh, believe it or not, as, fan as fantastical as that sounds, it's true. If you're telling us the truth, mm -hmm. everyone, the entire American public, has been lied to for decades. Yeah, there's a sophisticated uh, disinformation campaign targeting the U.S. populace, which is extremely unethical and immoral. You are saying to the human race, for the first time, an official intelligence representative at a high level from the US government is saying publicly, we are not alone. We're definitely not alone. Absolutely, the data points empirically that we're not alone, yeah. According to Grush, the government has been actively suppressing information about extraterrestrial life for decades, and has gone to great lengths to keep the public in the dark. As earth-shattering as this story is, and its implications on changing the course of mankind are staggering, at first, the story wasn't picked up by any of the major news channels. Instead, the American public was continued its slow drip news feed of the war in the Ukraine, President Donald Trump's indictment, and the regular transgender woke storylines. It took investigative journalist Leslie Kane to break the story on June 5th, in the science, technology, and military news site, The Debrief. While Grush's claims are still being investigated and verified, they have sparked a renewed interest in the idea that Bigfoot and UFO sightings may be related. Some have suggested that Bigfoot could be extraterrestrial in origin, while others have proposed that they may be some kind of advanced biological experiment or evenly a previously undiscovered species of primate. One theory that has gained traction in recent years is that the Bigfoot creatures may be connected to UFO sightings through their ability to manipulate time and space. Some researchers even suggest that Bigfoot may be able to move through portals or wormholes in the fabric of space-time, which could explain their elusive nature and the strange disappearances and reappearances that have been reported in connection with their sightings. It may also help to explain as to why a 600-pound or 700-pound ape-man 
that said to roam the wilds of an ever-expanding human civilization has yet to be clearly photographed by anyone. While these theories may be far-fetched for some, they are not without precedent, as there have been numerous reports of strange, unexplained phenomena associated with Bigfoot sightings, including strange lights in the sky, strange sounds, and even the appearance of strange symbols or glyphs. As you heard in the interview with him, Grush claims that there has been a very sophisticated disinformation policy with UFOs and the American public going on for decades. And if that's currently going on with UFOs, could the U.S. government be doing the exact same thing with Bigfoot? I'm just saying, could be, right? Think about it. And as we continue to explore the mysteries and report the goings-on within the Bigfoot world here at This Week in Bigfoot, it is now more plausible than ever that we may one day uncover the truth behind the connection between Bigfoot creatures and UFO sightings. As just one week ago, if you would have asked anyone if they really believed that aliens were behind the UFO UAP phenomena, most would have said no. And now, we may finally be coming face to face with the truth about those strange objects in the skies and who's really piloting them, whether we like it or not. Until then, we can only continue to speculate and investigate and look forward to the day we unravel both secrets. You know, I've heard quite a few times, there seems to be a limited number of active, reliable Bigfoot databases. And for the ones that are around, uh, what do they even offer? Now, while there's no perfect database to peruse through, I took the liberty of collecting whichever ones I could find and ranked them based on five factors. Their quantity of total reports, the geographic distribution of them, how frequently the database gets updated, its level of navigability and ease, and number of original reports. Each section was rated out of five points and summed up to a final score. Upon completion, it was determined that these sources should be considered the top five Bigfoot databases of 2023. Starting us off at number five, the Crypto Crew Sightings Map. I covered this database back in our second This Week in Bigfoot episode, in case it looked familiar. The map plots out over 360 encounters gathered by the Crypto Crew, with each one linking to the original report. About two-thirds of them are Bigfoot-related, as the database also includes reports on UFOs, dogmen, thunderbirds, and other cryptids. It's been updated multiple times in 2023, and some reports even feature photos and videos. The NAWC database contains over 300 reports which are organized both textually and on a map. They contain incident descriptions, investigator analysis, along with photos of the location, any evidence recovered, or of the follow-up investigation. Reports are classified in a three-tier system, that's unlike the BFRO's classic ABC model. Unfortunately, the database is only limited to reports from Arkansas, Louisiana, Missouri, Oklahoma, and Texas, with over 200 coming out of the Lone Star State alone. Number three, Oregon Bigfoot. Like the NAWC, Oregon Bigfoot's database primarily features reports in their home state. Although it has over 1,460 documented reports, 911 of them happened in Oregon. Nonetheless, they still offer an impressive collection of more than 550 cases across the United States. Unfortunately, it doesn't appear like the site's been recently updated, but it's still a solid source of original reports. Number two, the Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization. This is the standard for any and all Bigfoot databases. The BFRO has thousands of reports from across North America and other parts of the world. It has cases from every U.S. state except Hawaii, along with links to old newspaper articles and other historical sources. The BFRO already added several new public reports in 2023 and has dozens of investigators who are always looking into new cases. And finally at number one, the Bigfoot Mapping Project. One of the four leaders for interactive map databases, the Bigfoot Mapping Project has plotted out several hundred cases across North America. The map offers a variety of tools to filter out reports by date and even profile data like latitude or elevation levels in certain areas. Although it features many cases from other collections, the BMP has several of its own reports which make up most of the recent additions. Let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree with these rankings, but regardless of your stance, all five databases are excellent sources with thousands of publicly viewable reports from every U.S. state. If you're interested in checking them out, you can find the links to all five in the video's description. Brendan, back to you. 
Idaho may have its first legitimate Bigfoot sighting of 2023. A hiker shared footage of what appears to be a large, dark object trying to stay out of view behind a clump of trees in a wooded area of the gem state. Sightings of Bigfoot become more frequent in the spring and summer months in North America as the weather warms up and people begin spending more time outdoors. If there's people, especially if they've brought dogs, uh, that would kind of deter Bigfoots. But in other areas, it might actually be an attraction for them, especially people are camping and they've got coolers with food because that's what a lot of witnesses describe. They're out camping and then in the wee hours when people are snoring asleep in their tents, that's when they hear something come up, lift open their cooler, and very often they'll kind of rifle through it but not take anything and then put the lid back down and go away as if they're just trying to see what it is maybe that you're taking from the woods as opposed to bringing there. Could the hiker actually have recorded the elusive bipedal creature while on a recent trek in Idaho backcountry? Common sense says not likely, but then again, most of us didn't think aliens really existed until the recent military acknowledgement. Reports of Bigfoot in Idaho are not uncommon. In the past 50 years, the BFRO has logged numerous reports of the creature in and around the gem state. The most recent Idaho reports published by the group were filed in Clearwater and Shoshone counties back in November of 2021. The video uploaded to the YouTube channel That's the Two Seventy Four Eighty Nine shows something all too familiar to those who follow Bigfoot video claims, a dark creature remaining just out of view. Here we go again. And it's suspiciously short at only 17 seconds. Although the camera angle doesn't show definitive proof of anything other than the object moving slowly behind some branches or bushes, it does appear to have captured something upright that's obviously didn't want to be seen or make itself known. It might very well be a deer, a bear, or most likely a human, but the individual who recorded the footage claims it was a Bigfoot. So, here it is once again, take another look at it, and as usual, let us know what you think in the comments section. All right, so we've got an update on a segment we did in a recent episode. Maybe you remember this photo from episode 11. Well, I've been in touch with the witness and got some additional information. The witness reiterated he discovered the image after reaccessing an old Google account and found it while browsing through some old photos saved on his Genie app. He sent me a snapshot of the original camera roll, which he confirmed was taken in April 2021. We'll return to that in a sec but he believes what he captured on film here is a uh, juvenile squatch. And he thinks it's genuine because of where the figure's eyes are in relation to its shoulders and chest. He also thinks there could be a baby and possibly a second younger one latching onto the figure, which he even took the liberty of tracing out for me. The witness also said he's heard several Bigfoot stories in Cherokee County, North Carolina. He claims the squatches in this area crawl on all floors a lot which is reminiscent of the so-called spider crawl described by many witnesses. He also claims to find tracks on occasion and even sent me these images of some prints he allegedly found that he says were no more than 100 yards from his house and were the length of a size 13 shoe. In this one here, you can clearly see what appear to be dermal ridges. So I thought our viewers would find that interesting. Now, I did ask about that black line running across the figure's head and didn't really get a direct answer, just that he didn't believe it was something like headphones. So back to the camera roll. There weren't any photos I was happy with for a good size comparison. The best I could work with were these two. Now, while neither are exactly where the figure stood, do you think it's still bulkier and bigger than both human subjects? Let us know in the comments what you think about that. I did mess around with some filters and based on my amateur analysis saw no evidence of photoshopping in these images, which the witness repeatedly insisted were neither hoaxed or altered. So that's the latest on this particular photo. I want to thank Mr. Wellborn for um, taking the time to speak with me, giving this information, and for being so transparent.
Uh, go back and rewatch the original segment in episode 11 and tell us if you think this image is fact or hoax. I can tell by the clock on the wall, folks, it's once again that time, part of the show where we give content creator Michael Merchant, aka Snowwalker Prime, screen time to speak his mind and get what's ever bothering him off his chest. Lord knows what it is this week. We call it Two Minutes With. Here's an idea. We don't need a whole Sasquatch. We just need a photograph of its head. That cat vet's going to prove it just with a drop of saliva. Oh, we'll be way better off with just a picture of a head. So the backstory is I didn't know the Sasquatch was there. I was just taking pictures of my puppies, and when I got home and lightened the photos, I saw the Sasquatch. You didn't see the Sasquatch. Where's its body? What? It's, it's a disembodied head. Where's the rest of it? I don't make the rules. I just take the photos. It's the same mask that was on your head. It's a Halloween mask. That is exactly what a hater would say. And Bigfoot troll. I, I'm not hating. I'm just pointing out the obvious. It's just the head. Where's the rest of the Sasquatch? Where's your evidence, huh? Where's your Sasquatch photograph of, of a disembodied head? I don't see you parading one around. Come back to me. We'll have this discussion. Would, would you have something to show for it? I, I didn't start this. You go out and prove it's not a real Sasquatch. Good luck, mister. Look, it's not up to me to disprove what you presented. That, that's, that's on your plate. That is exactly what a jealous hater would say. When I bring to the table pristine evidence, proof of Sasquatch, and all you can do is whine and cry, is ask for more. I want more. Where's the body? Where's the rest of the Sasquatch? Why do you only have the head of the Sasquatch? Look, I didn't prepare a press release, okay? Neff just told me, show Mike, show. Show Mike, show Mike, show the people pictures of my head. Mike, you show pictures of my head. Why do they only have the head? Why have we now, we've come down to this. We're not even expecting a whole body anymore. Oh, it's good enough. We got a head. We got a picture of a head. Oh my God. The photograph on the right, the smiling face. That shot was taken first. The least we could do is expect for there to be a body attached to the head. And you notice they never know they're taking a picture of Sasquatch. I didn't know he was there. I just took a picture of my aunt clothesline because I found the rope interesting. It was an accident. I accidentally hit, hit the shutter. My dog took the photo. I don't know how it happened. But nonetheless, the photo got taken. Taken. The photo got taken. And we can all be thankful this was what was on the photo. Those who get it, I really appreciate your support. Hey, this is Chuck Larson. You're watching the CARC channel on YouTube. In an effort to keep you up to date on the progress of Legend Meets Science 2's production, here's what I received from Doug late Sunday night. We filmed for 16 hours today about how to build an e-bike with a front and rear camera system converting it into a camera bike with video and night vision and day color vision with sound. It's a dummy proof design. We show all the tricks of doing this yourself, then tested and demoed its capabilities. We then tested the bikes at night using a cutting edge drone in the wilderness area where many sightings have occurred. We also filmed a segment regarding an easy way to collect surface skin lipids, sebum from potential Bigfoot. We have named the skin oil Sasquatch Alba Vernix. In the oil is chemical makeup, latent details, and unique nuclear DNA. Note, the footage we recorded to test the e-bikes was amazing. We also arranged to interview a very unique witness with an amazing one-of-a-kind encounter, and the person has an extensive police and military background, Doug Hijack. So there's our first update from Doug in the Legend Meets Science 2 production up in Upper Minnesota. Sounds like things are moving along quite well. We will, of course, continue to keep you updated as things come into the studio. So be sure to stay tuned to This Week in Bigfoot for all your Legend Meets Science 2 production updates. Tonight's edition of This Week in Bigfoot is sponsored by Broken Branch Designs. 
from outerwear and clothing to home and garden decor. Broken Branch Designs has everything to do with Sasquatch. For more information, visit BrokenBranchDesignsLLC.com. I came across this bizarre story on the Bigfoot Evidence page, which is the Facebook outlet for Squatchable.com. Posted on June 9th, the story describes a man's account of burying a dead Bigfoot for his boss in Ormond Beach, Florida. The narrator claims his boss asked him one day to dig a hole for one of his animals that passed, and even gave a detailed description of the creature, which we'll go ahead and play for you now. If this thing were up on its feet, it would have been as tall as I was back then. Mind you, I was not a short lad, even in my teens, and I'd never seen anything like it. And its limbs weren't like those of a monkey, too long, too human-like, if you will. It was strange and a bit frightening, honestly. And that smell stuck with me all these years. Strange, unfamiliar. And the hands, they weren't paws, were like all hands. Five fingers, just like us, only longer and covered in thick hair. Its face, that's where it really got me. It wasn't a muzzle like you'd see on a dog or flat like them monkeys. It was, well, it was a face. A proper face with features I'd say was more human than not. The eyes were closed, mind you, but the rest, it was uncannily familiar. Now, just to clarify, the images you see are AI generated. They're not actual photos taken that day. So I just wanted to just wanted to put that out there. Anyway, the narrator revealed his plans to exhume the creature, claiming he gathered a team of individuals experienced in figuratively and literally digging up the past. I spoke with someone at Squatchable who gave me some additional details. Apparently, their website is backlogged with thousands of public reports, and he found this particular one while sifting through all them. It was originally sent back in 2016, and although the sender, who he referred to as Mr. C, didn't leave an email, he claimed there was going to be more to come. So it's possible he sent a subsequent submission that the Squashable team hasn't yet uncovered. I was told the incident allegedly happened in 1971, when Mr. C was around 12 or 13 years old. That would put him in his early to mid-60s today, and means it's been over 50 years since these events supposedly took place. Now, while the story is very intriguing, I'm sure something like this would have probably made the news if Mr. C actually followed through with his plans and found something. But who knows? It's possible Mr. C and his team couldn't even access the property or locate the burial site. Even more out there, maybe they did find something and they've just been sitting on it all these years for whatever reason. Or maybe they found nothing. The individual I spoke to at Squatchable said they would update me personally on any new developments, but I wouldn't expect anything imminent. In the meantime, I'm going to see if I can verify any details in the story and will report anything I find. It's time to bring you up to speed on a couple of recent Bigfoot podcasts and live streams. First up, it's the rebranding of what used to be the Harry Man Hoaxes and Hoodwinks channel, Triple H. Researcher and content creator Nikki Cologne has rebranded her channel. It can now be found under the new name, Sasquatch Secrets. Make a note of it. Here's the title roll. Now, if you've already subbed to the channel, it will still come up under the old H3 title. But moving forward, it will be now known as Sasquatch Secrets. In the first hijinks in the AM under the new moniker, Nikki and Enzo talk Bigfoot over coffee and cider. Let's roll it. But uh, the last thing I wanted to talk about today is my rebranding of the channel. Ooh. And it, uh, you are all starting to see the effects that that's happening. Um, yeah, we got a new look for hijinks. Did you guys like the the new beginning, the new intro? <laughs> My new uh, logo up there for hijinks. And 
there will be sadly no more movie night. I am. Oh. I can't. I can't do that. I'm sad that it has to go away. It was such a great thing, but so I can't play what I want to play, and. I have that doom overhead of, are they going to allow me to play it or are they going to take my show down? It's a really horrible feeling when that happens because of all the prep I do for the show. It's, it's not worth it for me to go through that. So it was a great idea. However, it's copyright. And I always know, I always knew it was copyright and that I could have issues you know, I was always kind of like, oh, is it going to play? Is it going to play? The reason why the first three or four shows we did worked is because they were all shows that were Bigfoot related that ha- were not backed by any major um, uh, studio. OK, so nobody had another existing copyright beyond the public domain. Batting second this week, it's Weird Encounters episode 34. In the latest upload, we listen in as the guest tells a tale of Marines opening fire on Bigfoot. It's Untold Radio AM. I looked out into the darkness and I saw these creatures maybe three to four hundred yards away. As other Marines had woken up to the sound of my buddy shooting, the OIC, officer in charge, came running up to ask what was going on. When we pointed out to the creatures, he froze in place. About this time, we heard tons of gunfire suddenly erupt from another unit that was conducting training in the area as well. When I looked back at where these things were, they were no longer there. Instead, they were running on all fours directly at us. I raised my rifle and began to fire at them, and those with guns and ammo joined in, and the others who didn't ran back to get theirs. I lined up my sights with the closest one and began to fire into it. I saw chunks of its flesh get ripped off when I hit it. It tumbled down, and without missing a beat, it regained its balance and kept sprinting at us. At this point, I knew our rifles were useless, but I wasn't going to leave my buddy. That's when I heard the OIC yelling for us to get into the trucks and get the hell out of there and get back to the main side. In the third slot this week, it's Chuck's old research group, Sussex County Bigfoot. Bigfoot Campfire Stories, Episode 17, with guest Dave Sheely. Let's check it out. But I kept hearing noise, and that's when I got my camera up. I started training in that area there where it was coming from and that's when I saw the skunk ape. It came out, it went down that pine hammock, down the edge of it over there, almost to the end and that's quite a distance. And then it crosses from the right in the the trees there across the open prairie in front of these trees out here. And when it gets right out in this area, it's really moving out. It's running as fast as a deer. And it goes, and I think I moved forward and caught it just as it went into a hammock just back behind this one. Batting cleanup this week at Smoky Sasquatch Stories and Survival. Say that three times fast. Sasquatch Encounter 2023. You never know when you might see one. Giddy up. It was a real concerning sound, that's for sure. I got off the lawnmower, checked behind me in the trees where the sound was coming from and it was coming from across the old gravel road past my mailbox. The trees were all shaking violently despite there not being a single breeze that day. I ended up catching them in my sight, the ones making all the commotion. At first, all I could see was their shadowy figures moving through the woods. They were raising their fists as they screeched and howled up towards the sky. The sun soon hit where I was staring and sure enough, Those were a group of Bigfoot. I didn't know what they were trying to express. They all had brown hair and gray skin, very raggedy and dirty looking, and I swear I could smell them from where I was standing about 30 to 40 feet away. Smelled like sh**. Well, I jogged on back into the house fast as I could, which ain't very fast. All them whoppers caught up with me in age. I grabbed my phone, and when I came back out, they had all left but I could still see the trees moving in the distance, and I got what I could recorded. I tried to send it to you, but I couldn't figure the system out. Probably government watching and detected the evidence and kept it from being sent because they don't want the public to know them things are out there. Today's episode of This Week in Bigfoot is sponsored by Got Knockers Apparel and Clothing. From hoodies and caps to soaps, keychains, and bats, Got Knockers has everything you need to show your love of Bigfoot. 
For more information and to shop their items, be sure to visit the Got Knockers page on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Got Knockers. Hey, Got Knockers? Summer is here, days are getting warmer, and Bigfoot conferences continue to draw in record crowds around North America. That being said, there's still only one guy we can all turn to to keep us up to speed on the who's, the what's, and the where's, and that's Chuck Larson with another great show in this week's Spotlight. Medline Fall Bigfoot Festival, June 17th, 18th, Medline Fall, Washington, Conference Spotlight. The Medellin Falls Bigfoot Festival is an annual, town-wide, and mostly free event held the weekend of June 17th and 18th in Medellin Falls, Washington. This year's festival features a 5K race, pancake breakfast, Bigfoot presenters dinner, and two-day Bigfoot festival. With arts and crafts vendors, plenty of food, and Bigfoot presentations by Tom Cantrell, Mel Scahan, Thomas Seward, Squatch America, and more. For more information, go to mfbigfoot.com. And that's this week's Conference Spotlight. Brendan, take us out. All right, folks, it pains me to say that once again, we are out of time for this week's episode. I'd like to thank you for watching and remind you to like and share everything we do here at the Catskill Appalachian Research Collective. Tell your friends. And if you have any questions or comments or maybe a story for the show, you can always drop us a line at This Week in Bigfoot Newscast at gmail.com. So, until next week, for Mike Lucci and Chuck Larson, I'm Brendan Brown reminding you that when it comes to getting your Bigfoot news, be informed, not biased. Take care. See you next week. <laughs>